Hey guys, what is up? Max Norbury here from howtotrade.com and guys, today is the day. Today is the day where we find out exactly how those banks and institutions are trading using equilibrium theory or order block theory. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, now guys, this is a super exciting topic. It's something that I absolutely love talking about and it's something that I love sharing with you guys as well. It, not only is it actually quite fascinating, but it also really opens up everybody's minds into how the markets work, how those stocks are particularly traded by those larger firms and by those institutions. Now guys, as you are well aware, banks and institutions, they're not gonna trade just one way. It's just gonna be part of a much larger and grander scale operation. But by understanding equilibrium theory and order block that little bit more, you will get a better sense of what's going on when you look at your candlestick charts. And hopefully you won't come to an area of uh, confusion whilst you're looking at the price action trading into and out of those particular zones that we're gonna be looking at in a moment. So without any further ado, let's get going going. Hey there guys, what's up now? Thanks for joining me on the charts. Okay guys, so what we're going to be thinking about today is how those institutions, how those banks are using price fluctuations to fill their orders at a better price and catch you retail, retail traders out at the same time. Okay, now before we begin with this, I really want to, I really want to say that don't think about this as a standalone system, okay, per se. This is not like a strategy in itself. I want you to think about this as more of a way of thinking around the markets, okay? Because the thing is, when retail traders are looking at particular chart, you know, price action patterns and uh, sort of looking at good momentum and good volume in the markets, they're nine times out of ten, those guys, you, you know, you, we're always executing trades at the wrong time. You know, you must have heard so many times retail traders execute trades, uh, you know, execute their longs at the highs, they execute their shorts at the lows, when really we should be doing the absolute opposite, which is why ultimately 95% of people are losing money in the financial markets. And it's really this way of thinking around the markets is got so many benefits to it because not only is it going to give you the clarity of what's going on behind the screens when you're looking at price fluctuations like this, but it's also going to give you a really good understanding around psychology, how those retail traders are actually you know, losing that much money in the markets. You're going to understand why they're losing that much money in the markets and you're going to be able to separate yourselves from those retail traders and actually become a trader that is able to anticipate the price action pullbacks and jump aboard when those big banks and those big institutions decide to actually move the share price in the stocks okay so for today's example guys we're going to be using nio um nio stocks uh, it's a pretty good mover it's been around for a little while now um uh, i haven't haven't studied the chart myself uh necessarily too too closely yet it's a completely fresh clean chart um but I just want to apply my supply and demand, my equilibrium theory to this and show you that money flow, show you the order block theory and how those big banks and institutions are actually using the price action to one, catch out the retail traders, fill their boots with the free liquidity from the stop losses of the retail traders and ultimately get their orders filled at a better price. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at here is we're going to be looking initially just setting out some zones. Now, like in the last video, guys, the last YouTube video I released, we were talking about equilibrium theory. We were looking at how the zones are formed. We we're thinking about the fact that when a zone is uh, a zone is formed at the beginning of a price action pullback, every single time, regardless, and it, you can always confirm a good zone via the retest of that zone. So when I say a retest, I mean let's say for example this is the supply and demand zone. When I say a retest, I mean price breaks up closes above it, comes back down to retest that zone, and then continues north from there. Now, retail traders will be taking longs at this area here, and they will be taking shorts at this area here. Ultimately, this is going to lead to very unhappy traders. It's where they lose their money. When in reality, what we should be doing is we should be literally thinking to ourselves, we've got a break close and a retest of this level here. So then once the retest is completed, we want to hop aboard with the big banks and the institutions and execute our longs there for that continuation to the upside, leading ultimately to happy traders, right? So that's exactly what we're going to be applying to this live chart. 
What we're going to be doing first of all is going to be drawing in a zone. So we can see there's a nice price action pullback down here. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw in my supply and demand zone from there. Okay, so that's one supply and demand zone. As we can see, price action comes back to retest that zone. Okay, before getting this really, really nice big extension to the upside. Now, once we get this big extension to the upside, what's the first thing we're going to be doing here? Well, of course, we're going to be drawing in a supply and demand zone, right? So this is going to be what's called the pocket of liquidity, okay, or a liquidity pool. Now, when we draw this in, we just literally drag this along sideways. We don't need to see what's right at the chart, okay? We don't want to be hindsight trading here. We want to be doing this as it's applied. So when price action breaks and closes above, it comes back down and it retests that pocket of liquidity. Now, this area here, guys, I really, really, really want to be focusing on, okay? Last time I was, like, you know, I was trying to guide you guys, coach you guys around applying the zones in the chart. We've already done that, but now I want to talk about what's actually happening behind the scenes here. Now, when price action comes to this level, okay, retail traders hit this level here, and then they take longs, okay? They've seen this big climb up. Retail traders don't get in at the beginning of the moves. They get in at the end of the moves. So then we get this big price action pullback. Then the retail traders' stop losses are triggered. Price action comes up. It comes up. We hit it again here. So then there's more liquidity in there because retail traders are taking longs again. And we come up. We get the break and close above. And then we come back down and retail traders are taking longs again. So this area here, this is going to have a significant amount of retail trader liquidity. Okay, RTL, retail trader liquidity, loads and loads of it. The stop losses are going to be down in this area here, right, which is our liquidity pool. Now, the big banks and the institutions know exactly how your minds work. They understand mass psychology, okay? And this is an, a case, and we will see repeated cases of this, of mass psychology across the board. So what happens upon this area here is the market breakout, the market open takes place at 2.30, right? That's the market breakout. The big banks and the institutions, they don't want to take their longs. They want to fill their boots with orders at 2077. They want to drive that price down to around 16, 15, 16 bucks a share. Now, when the price gets driven down, they can order larger orders, okay? They can fill larger orders. So what the big banks and the institutions do is they line themselves up with a load of pending orders down at this level of liquidity down here. And then price gets driven back down here by market makers, Okay, it hits those pending orders, the pending orders are triggered, and then we see the spring, which is the spring continuation, which is when the share price continues to the upside yet again. So we continue up, we continue up, okay, and we get this next area here as well, right? Now, this area is a really nice pocket of liquidity, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to get another supply and demand zone, we're going to draw a nice big supply and demand zone around that level right there, okay? Now we're going to wait for the retest. Now guys, in this particular instance, we don't get an immediate retest, but I am pretty damn confident that at some stage, price will be driven back down to that pool of liquidity, all right? So we'll just keep on going. We'll just keep on waiting. So price continues to the upside, continues to the upside. We get a huge move, an absolutely whopping move to the upside up here, okay? Price action comes along. It grinds down a little bit. We come up to another high here. So this is going to be another pocket of liquidity. So I'm going to draw a nice supply and demand zone around this area as well and drag that one along. Okay, now I want to focus our attention on this area. On this area here, we can see the pocket of liquidity. Okay, we can see this nice supply and demand zone where there are pending orders. Once we come back down for the retest, now remember, think about the retail trader's mind. Retail trader is not going to execute their orders here. Retail traders are not going to execute their orders here. Retail traders are going to wait until they see that really big explosive move. The explosive move happens on this candlestick. So then the retail trader liquidity is triggered here on this area, right? The price action then comes back down to retest this low, but it actually comes back up a little bit. What happens in this area? We form a lower high, okay? So now we can see price action has formed a consistent lower high in this area here, down to there. We come down again, we come back up, and the price action has failed to make a clean high yet again. So we've actually been failing to make any significant highs. So therefore, the price action isn't continuing, is it? We haven't got a solid continuation.
So in this particular instance, what I'm thinking now is price action is probably going to be driven lower. And I'm going to be waiting for a deeper price action pullback to test maybe some old liquidity level. Now, what old liquidity level do we have in our charts? Okay, let's keep this one in. Let's see what happens. So price action continues to trade down. It continues to trade lower. And there we have a price action retest of the pool of liquidity right down at that level again. Okay, so then price action comes right the way down, falls straight into that pool of liquidity, the pending orders are triggered, and away the market goes. Okay, and then we continue to trade here. Now, this is our current market price at 49.40. So, what the whole psychological process that's taking place inside there are big institutions and bank. I wouldn't necessarily say banks and as such, but big institutions, hedge funds, professional outlets. All stuff like this that make up the significant portion of liquidity inside the share markets like this, inside this equity market in the NIO stock, is driving the price lower to fill previous pending orders at a better price. Are the big institutions in the hedge funds going to want to take their trades here at around 64 bucks a share? Of course they're not. Why the hell would they want to do that? They're going to want to fill their boots up with the stocks and the share price down at 32 Okay, that's half the value, 64 at the highs, 32 down there. That's not a coincidence. So what they do is they have the market makers drive the price lower. They'll be taking shorts at the same time, intraday floor traders. They'll be taking the shorts down to the pool of liquidity. The liquidity pool is hit, pending orders are triggered, and away we go. As soon as the pool of liquidity is hit, the market hits its spring, and it then continues to rise to the upside. Okay, and meanwhile, the poor retail traders, they're taking longs up at these highs, thinking this is the place to go. They're thinking, oh, the price action is going to go long here. So this is a great area to buy. So they take longs there as well on the price action pullback. By this stage, their accounts are halfway down, 50% losses. And they're thinking, wow, this stock's really falling away. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take shorts. So then they take shorts there. They get stopped out again. They're thinking, oh, okay, this is a good place to short. So they take another short there then another short, then another short, and bang, the market flips around, the whole thing is wiped out. Retail traders are left with a big fat 0%, and the liquidity providers, uh, liquidity hedge funds, the hedge funds, the, the bigger firms, the institutions, they walk away with all the retail trader liquidity, and they're walking away with their pending orders filled at 32 bucks a share instead of 64 bucks a share. Okay, so think about the markets, guys. It's a game of psychological warfare. Okay, they know exactly how you think, they know how you trade. Do you know what? I'm in a trading room with 500, sometimes even 600 plus members. Okay, we've assisted tens of thousands of traders over the years. They all make the same mistakes. I know this because I come from a very humble background myself. I was, a I was literally a retail trader trading for my parents' house, okay? Living in mum and dad's, 19 years old, part-time job. I was right there. I was literally just the same as you, okay? I understood and studied, ex I studied an incredible amount into equilibrium theory and order blocks and money flow, how the markets are actually working behind the scenes. As soon as I understood it, it really made something click inside because now when I look at this, I just see money making opportunities all over the bloody place. It doesn't mean, oh, I'm going to start taking longs here because of a price action pullback or anything like that. That does not happen to me anymore. I wait and I sit on my hands and I'm patient because I know that these pockets of liquidity are where the money is. And as soon as you know where the money is in the charts, you can start to piggyback ride on the bank's big moves. Okay. So as soon as price action comes back down to here, we trigger our trades, we jump on the same exact moves as the banks and the institutions, and target profits are going to be up at the next liquidity zone. Meanwhile, the retail traders have just lost 100% of their account balances. At the same time, I'm making 3 or 4 5% of one trade idea from liquidity pool number one up to liquidity pool number two. All right. So guys, that's basically all there is to it. Think about the supply and demand as pockets of liquidity. Supply and demand equilibrium theory, tons and tons of big firms and big institutions are going to have all of their pending orders all sat 
on these big areas of liquidity. That is why no matter what stock you look at, what, what any market at all that you look at, you are going to see supply and demand aspects everywhere. Let's have a look at Nvidia, for example, right? Nvidia stock. You look at this one, you see big areas of liquidity all over the place. Look at this four hour stretch here, okay? We have area of supply and demand right there. We have another area of supply and demand right here. We have another area of supply and demand right here. We have another area of supply and demand right here. That's literally just one chart, guys. Literally, breaks, closes, retest, continue, retest, continue, retest, continue, retest. You can go on about this for days and you will see it happen everywhere because all that's happening is session breakouts are taking place. Institutions are driving the price back down to fill their orders at better prices rather than the retail traders who are having to take their longs up at 430. Nobody wants to take their orders at 430. Or they want to take their orders down at 400 bucks a share, even 395 a share. Think about how many millions that's going to save them, save them and make them in the long run as well. Okay, so think about what is happening every single time. Look at this massive price action rise back up here. Imagine the amount of retail traders that were taking their longs up at these highs here, thinking this is it, and video is going to explode to a thousand bucks a share. Oh, hang on a minute. No, it's not because the retail, the, the institutions, sorry, and the banks are driving price lower to fill their boots at their pending orders and the level of liquidity down at 470 a share. They're going to fill their orders up here, trigger a bunch of trades, and then drive the price higher for the next wave up. They come back up to 575, it falls down a bit, comes back up to 587, falls down a bit, and then video share price ultimately continues trading higher and higher and higher. And the most amazing thing here, guys, as well, if you drag this zone along, look at where that area goes to, right? Price action comes back up to this level here. They think, ah, do you know what? We're going to take the retail traders for a ride once more. It's free liquidity. It's a free lunch. Why not? So then the big banks drive the price lower again. The retail traders in the meantime have taken longs here. They've taken longs here. And I damn well bet they were taking longs up at that move there as well. So every single time, stop loss, stop loss, stop loss, stop loss. Now, all that liquidity is just flowing freely into the markets for the big banks and the institutions to trade. Price drives right the way back down, straight into the pool of liquidity. Pending orders yet again are triggered from there, and the price springs to the upside. And every single time, the banks are winning and the institutions are winning. If you follow this process, you have a supply and demand zone up there, right? You have a supply and demand zone here. You could just be trading the longs and the you could be trading the longs and the shorts. Take a long at the breakout, take a short here at the breakout, take a long there at the breakout, take a short there, probably get stopped out on that one, but you've just done 5%. You've just done 5% Nvidia stock, you've lost 1%. Okay? Then you get the breakout of this and look, Nvidia stock's trading up at 800 bucks a share now. Okay? So use this method to your advantage, guys. I implore you, study it. Learn about equilibrium theory. I really, really do. I talk about this consistently every single day inside our trading room. I find order block theory and money flow into the markets absolutely fascinating. It really, really is finding out what's happening behind the scenes. And as soon as you learn how the institution psychology works, that is then going to push you on to the next level in your trading careers. Listen, hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, it's definitely a subject that, like I said just a second ago, guys, I absolutely love talking about. And I chew the fat on this subject um, all the time inside our trading room. Multiple times a day, people do not hear me stop. You know, they don't just hear me ever stop talking about it. It's something that I really, really do find absolutely fascinating. And I love the psychological aspect of it. And ultimately, guys, you know, trading psychology goes so understated all the time. Traders nowadays are so heavily focused on system, strategy, uh, and, and ultimately just seeking, you know, money making, uh, you know, money making endeavors, um, you know, in the, in the financial markets. And although that's what we're ultimately there for, there's one thing and one thing alone that's going to seriously be the make or break between you being a good trader and you not making it at all, and that is your mind. You have to get your mindset in control. And what I hope I've gained today, at least, even if I've affected one person's mind positively from this video, is to give you that clarity of what's actually happening 
when you look at price action pulling back into a liquidity pool like we just spoke about when you see price action at a really big high and it hasn't come back to retest that supply and demand zone that you've just seen you now know that the likely chance is the price is actually going to be driven back down there so it can trigger those institutional orders and they can get their better fills and exactly when they do that you can then start to piggyback ride on their big moves which is exactly the way I trade in the same way I've traded for years now okay so it's definitely something that's worth understanding it's worth getting a good grasp of and guys let me tell you once again I teach this stuff all the time in our trading room inside the, uh, you know in the in the streams and in the educational content which we have absolutely hundreds of hours worth in there okay between me and my colleagues it's definitely a good it's definitely the best place that you want to find yourselves if you are seriously considering becoming a trader or you want to find out more about trading altogether and don't forget we do have a seven day free trial as well so definitely worth uh, jumping aboard for that one if you don't like it at the end of the seven days no harm no foul you literally say see you later and that's all there is to it no pennies taken at all and guys finally I'd love for you to subscribe to this channel we are building this channel nice and slowly at the moment but things are going to take off soon and more more work more video what's are going to be continue to be posted out and I'm going to make sure it is always top-notch quality and stuff that you guys will find ultimately interesting and hopefully stuff in a different way that you don't actually find elsewhere on YouTube so guys please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon as well so that you're reminded of any single time a video is posted and I look forward to catching you in the next video. So take care, good luck and above all else, trade safe. I'll see you then.